Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at how you can alter the speed of a recording and also alter the pitch at the same time. Now typically this isn't something you'd want to do but this has actually been prompted by a question from a viewer on another video and it's something which occasionally you may need to do. In terms of background, if you have a recording on tape and you speed it up or you slow it down, you may or may not know because a lot of you probably haven't recorded on analog tape, then the pitch will change with that as well. So if you play it back at double the speed, it will not only be double the speed, it will be an octave up and vice versa. If you play it back at half speed, it will be an octave down. Now this can become uh, an insurmountable problem in terms of you may only have access to a tape machine which plays back at seven and a half inches per second and the recording could have been made at 15 and so on. So this is sometimes something where, unless you buy a new piece of equipment, you're stuck with this. However, we're gonna look at how you can fix that uh, reasonably well. So on screen, you can see I've got two versions actually of the same track, which I've processed to make them as if I'd recorded them at half and double speed. So if we listen to the top one, the double speed one, it will be, as you can imagine, double speed. And if you listen to it at half speed, you get quite, quite a nice effect, I think, actually. But that's not something I'm going to be spending too much time on. Anyway, the, the way to fix this, there are a number of ways to fix this. I appreciate this. I'm sure there will be loads of different ways you could do it. But I'm just looking at doing it from Cubase with no other tools. So there are other tools you could do it. There's other ways you could do it as well. But this is a way which is going to lead into something uh, more creative, which I'm going to look at in a future video. So what we want to do is we want to double the length of this to half the time. Now, first things first, if you do this with the normal time stretch tool, you have a problem because if we do this and we'll get it to roughly double the length, so it's going to be somewhere around there. The problem is it's still at that high pitch. So although the tempo is, is more like it, this isn't what we're looking for. Now, sometimes that can be useful. Again, you might want to find a creative use for that, but that's not what we're looking to do today. The key to doing this, there's really two steps. The first thing is changing the time stretch mode. So the algorithm that's used, which is up here, if you're not seeing this, you can click the little cog and make sure the algorithm is ticked. If you're on a smaller screen, you may need to remove some of these. So for instance, Let's say you decided to take out uh, invert phase to move things to the left. You just untick a few of these that happened before there, or you can set it up and you can move it around. But as long as you've got algorithm on screen, you should be in business. And we're going to click here. Now, what you're interested in is Elastic Pro tape. Okay, not formant tape and not efficient, but Elastic Pro tape. I know this is available in Artist. I'm not sure if it's available in lower versions because I don't have a, a lower version of Cubase installed on this Mac. but you change that and now when you time stretch it will change the pitch and the time so if we stretch this out now you'll hear that instead of that high pitch bass drum obviously it's still too fast but that's sounding much more like it now the second part of this is making sure that you get it to be the right length and the easiest way I've found to do this is actually to deal with samples because trying to multiply up 109 bars, four beats, etc. that's just a waste of time. So if you change it to samples mode, so down here you can see it says select primary time format. If we change it to samples, which is off my screen capture, but trust me, it's changed to samples. We now get just a number and all you need to do is to multiply that by two. So you can even copy that. So I'm just going to double click that, copy it, and then open up a calculator. Paste that number in and then multiply it by two. And that's the magic number we're looking for. So I'm just going to copy that. And to change this length, it's, it's slightly awkward. So the problem is you can't just type in length there and make it change, which is a little bit annoying. But what you can do is you can use the cursor as a marker and then do that. So what we're going to do is change our position here. I'm just going to paste that number in here. So that's how long we want it to be. And then we're going to make sure we've got snap turned on and that we're in cursor mode. So you can pick that here. You just click. Normally you'll be in grid mode. Change that to cursor. 
And now when we do our time stretch, it snaps to that length, so we get it exactly the right length. And now when we go back to the beginning, now we're at the speed we should be. So the other one is exactly the same process. So we can just change this. So I'm just gonna solo this one. Again, change it to Elastic Pro Tape, and that will change pitch and time at the same time. And then we need to do the maths for this. So this one is 384, etc. So we're just going to copy that there. And then I'm going to put it into the calculator. And this time divided by two. And yeah, we come up with the same number because uh, we would do it's the same track after all, but I'm just going to copy that. Again, put that in the right place, so I can just double click this to type in the number, paste that in. That obviously is where we should be. And then again, time stretch this one. And there you go. So this is gonna be quite reminiscent of dealing with samples back in the day, because there was maths, et cetera, involved if you wanted to be really accurate, but we can see that's done that. And to show how accurate the processing is, if we go to the mixer, and invert the phase of one of these tracks. So I'm going to invert the phase of this track, but solo both of them. They almost completely cancel out. So you can hear just a little bit, but certainly not an enormous amount of difference between the two. So it's it's reasonably accurate processing. I'm sure you are losing something in the process. It's It's inevitable that that's going to be the case, but it's certainly not a million miles off. And if you've only got this as your option to recover something that you've got off tape that's at the wrong speed, then this will certainly be better than, than not having it or having it at half speed or double speed. So that's a look at how to change the speed and pitch of a recording that you've done. Uh, I hope you found that useful and we will be exploring this in a little more depth in a future video because there are some sort of creative things that you can do with this, obviously, but if you're aware that that tape mode exists, there's plenty you can do with it. As ever, hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.